I have here a couple of Wimshurst machines. This, this is a 19th century invention. It's an electrostatic generator which uh, generates between two and three hundred kilovolts, which is enough, as you see, to arc across several inches. Now you can't see every spark just because of the frame rate of the camera. You can hear them all, and if you're lucky you catch one, there you go. Now, uh, I have enough, another one here. Now this is the second machine I built. This is what's called a sectorless machine. And I have this one hooked up to a pretty large Leyden jar, the silver one up there. So uh, it's actually packing a pretty good jolt. You might say this is the uh, 18th century version, or the 19th century equivalent of a taser. This would do a number on you, I think. I've never tried it. Now, electricity, as we know, can flow quite easily through certain things like metal. But it cannot penetrate certain things like glass. So I set up an experiment to find out what would happen to a piece of glass if you forced the spark through it. What would it do to the glass? So I want to see what happens if I can blast a spark through a microscope slide this is about a 32nd of an inch thick, or about a millimeter. And I took a piece of quarter inch plexiglass here. This is also a very good insulator, just like glass. And I drilled a little hole in it here. And I'm going to seal the slide down onto that hole using a bead of Vaseline. I'll just goosh the Vaseline down here. Get out of there. Stoosh. There we go. Smoosh this down here and make sure it's sealed all the way around. Make sure the Vaseline is smooshed evenly all around so the spark can't sneak under and go around. So it's got to go through or not go at all. All right, let's see what happens. It won't go. So I'm going to move these electrodes closer together. Now let's see. Oh, it did. I'm going to put the macro lens on this camera. Yeah, well, I just watched the playback, and unfortunately the, the flash did not get picked up by the video, although you did hear the audio because uh, of the frame rate of the camera, unfortunately. But anyway, there's the little tiny dink in the slide. You can see it there. And we're going to go ahead and put that under the microscope and see what it looks like. Well, here we are up in the microscope lab. You might not think so. Oh, look, there's one. Oh, that's a sideways looking one, ain't it? But the one we're concerned with uh, is this scope right here. I have this slide mounted on here the one that we just punched with the spark. Uh, this is illuminated from the top by this uh, snouty thing here. And there's our subject. Let's see if we can see what we're looking at. Uh, it's not, I don't think we can do this. Ooh, there it is under there. Yeah, but I'm going to mount the camera to this microscope and uh, we'll see it a lot better. Now there we have it with the camera mounted to the scope. This is under 40 power. I'm going to switch over to the next objective, which is uh, a 10 power with a 
10 power eyepiece, so this is 100 diameters. Let's get it in focus. Uh, there we go. There, and uh, let me move this over. So centered right there, you can see the tiny little pinhole where that spark went through. And I'm going to move the focus around here so you can see the various details. So some say that the sudden heat of the spark blasting through is what shatters it. I don't really know. You can let me know in the comments what you think, how this physically actually works. But I think it's really cool. Let's try the next objective. Might... Let's see what we got here. Get that in focus. Boom. Yeah, there we go. Interesting. It does look like a tiny little bullet hole. And here's a nice shot of a different hole that I made after that first one. And here's another one. Very nice. Very pretty. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And hit the like button if you did. And subscribe for you. It's free. And I always love hearing your comments. So thank you very much for watching. And take care, everybody.